Hello friends, welcome to another day of Q&A's, joined by my lovely and helpful wife Lucy. Hi guys. Lucy will be asking me one of your questions from Instagram. So the question is by Ishiak8888. Do you think doing a cycle without AI is wise, knowing the damage that AIs do? Thank you Lucy. So, uh, interesting question. So, I have actually a video on this subject called uh, the AI uh, CERM debate. I'm going to link this somewhere here. It may come before or after. I'm very bad at linking these cards. <laughs> but you should watch that video. Uh, but I understand that there are people that are new to the channel and that haven't uh, heard that video. So I'll summarize some of the outcomes of that video as well as I'll discuss some more things that I didn't discuss in that video. So the first thing is, it is not clear that AIs cause harm. So he mentioned the harms that AIs cause. I used to think that this was the case before. Having looked into the, the papers myself um, in detail, although that was after I stopped using AIs myself, but I looked into the papers in detail and what I discovered is this. Essentially, so CIRMs, which are selective estrogen receptor modulators like Novadex, mm -hmm. which are alternatives to AI. AIs is an aromatase inhibitor. It inhibits the conversion of testosterone into estrogen by the enzyme aromatase. I remember. Either, yeah, there's a couple of ways it can do that. Um, and then and Novadex, which is the most uh, common uh, CIRM, uh, the, in the literature actually probably the most common. Yeah, Novadex is the most common. It's used often for breast cancer patients. It selectively uh, usually inhibits the uh, activity of estrogen, but mm. sometimes it does the opposite, so it modulates. Um, Novadex, as well as actually raloxifen and other CIRMs, have a profound impact on lipids. They decrease LDL cholesterol and LDL particle count profoundly by like 40% or something like that. Very high amounts. You can look at that other video to know, to remember. I don't remember the exact number. But basically, they have a very profound impact on uh, LDL cholesterol and lipid health. So in studies, the reason why AIs were thought to cause damage is that in studies on breast cancer patients, when women took AIs, mm -hmm. they had worse cardiovascular outcomes than when they took CIRMs. People thought that was because of the reduction in estrogen, but it may be because CIRMs were so healthful. In fact, raloxifen has been researched uh, raloxifen has been researched as a drug for people with lipid problems, with cholesterol problems. The, the only issue is it hasn't shown outcome measures, except in these uh, breast cancer, female breast cancer patients. But in other studies, it has not shown benefits on outcomes the way statins have. It definitely reduces LDL cholesterol significantly, but may not cause a uh, reduction in cardiovascular mm -hmm. events. So not, nonetheless, that seems to be the state of the art opinion on AIs and CIRMs. CIRMs seem to be protective and AIs we don't know that they are clearly harmful. But with that said, let me talk about estrogen briefly because I personally would never use an aromatase inhibitor at, at all. Uh, it, I wouldn't use it unless someone is going, uh, getting uh, gynecomastia, which is a, a development of breast tissue in a man, in which case that person should make a, honestly, he should, that person, he's, it's a he, he should make a decision and decide whether they want to use anabolic androgenic steroids. And if they do, they should save money and get the surgery to remove the, the gland. Because it is not worth worrying about that gland if you're trying to use steroids. What is the other reason to use uh, an AI? The way, for example, probably Greg Doucette uses it, is to have a cut face and low, low uh, uh, water in your body, mm -hmm. which women also use it for a similar reason, to get a chiseled face and stuff like that. That, I believe, is... Uh, very unhealthy. If I believe that if you had a higher water content, I'm not a doctor and this is not prescriptive advice, but if I was in that position, I would rather use a diuretic than an AI. Okay. An AI, for example, when men have lower estrogen levels, even their hair starts falling out. Estrogen is extremely protective in many parts of the body. So in the brain, estrogen has neuroprotective effects and it improves memory and learning. Uh, for example, this has been shown in uh, tryptophan uh, depletion studies when they deplete people's diets of the precursor to serotonin tryptophan. They find that estrogen can undo the effects that tryptophan depletion has on the brain, on the, on the memory. So it improves oh. it. The way that uh, estrogen does that is through uh, increasing uh, tryptophan hydroxylase 2, which is an en enzyme necessary in the production of serotonin in the brain. It also increases the bonding, the affinity of 
of serotonin to 5-HT2A receptors, which you'll recall, guys, are the same mm. receptors involved in the psychedelics. Yeah. The main receptor called, that causes hallucinations in psychedelics and a very important receptor, 5-HT2A. So estrogen has a profound impact on the serotonin system of the brain, which is why women have more serotonin than men. Other than that, estrogen is the only major, major hormone that has serious antioxidant effects. So estrogen in general has two kinds of effects. It has an acute effect and it has a genomic effect. A genomic effect means that it changes hormones. What they do is they change gene transcription in the body. They change hundreds of genes. They change how they're expressed in the body. That's why you can take testosterone, you can get more muscular, you can gain facial hair. These are all different things from different genes, mm -hmm. right? So estrogen does something similar, but it also has an acute effect. In an acute state, it reduces, it, it deals with, uh, uh, with free radicals in the body. So it has an antioxidant effect. It also has tremendous cardiovascular effects. Uh, number one, it reduces homocysteine. So you guys will recall from my other videos on methylation that uh, the methylation cycle, why it's so crucial to us, the, one of the main reasons so crucial is because when the amino acid methionine is converted into homocysteine, it has mm -hmm. to be recycled back into methionine. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, homocysteine levels rise in the body. Homocysteine levels are correlated to cardiovascular disease strongly and to many other things. Estrogen reduces homocysteine. Mm -hmm. It also increases nitric oxide synthase, increasing the nitric oxide production in our body. Nitric oxide is the main vasodilator in the body. Mm -hmm. This can have other problems because this can easily eventually cause oxidation, which I've described in another video that we recorded today. But the point is it does cause vasodilation. In rodents, estrogen uh, protects the heart from uh, hypertrophy, from growth. Uh, that can be caused either due to um, more beats per minute or a vasoconstriction. Okay. Maybe it does this through the vasodilation, through the nitric oxide. I'm not sure. Um, so it has tremendous impacts on the... Oh, also... Not only is it antioxidant, but it specifically is powerful at reducing the oxidation of cholesterol and of oh. LDL particles. And that oxidation, as everyone will remember, is what is thought to cause the plaque buildup. Mm -hmm. So it is actually more powerful than uh, vitamin um, A at doing this, which is almost vitamin A is almost negligible in this impact. And it is the same power of vitamin E. So it's very, very powerful at reducing LDL oxidation and fatty acid oxidation in general. So um, those are some of the impacts of estrogen. Now, why has, I've mentioned this in an earlier video, F followers of the channel for a long time will know about this, but I mentioned a long time ago that it was actually tried once. Uh, it was called the, uh, I forgot what the trial was called, but they tried to use estrogen as a drug to prevent uh, secondary heart uh, cardiovascular events in people that already had one, in men mm -hmm. that already had one. They tried, if I recall, 2.5 milligrams of, of uh, orally available estrogen, estradiol. And uh, I think it was called the coronary project. I'll cite it somewhere here. So this, uh, this it was happened in the early 1970s. The problem is they died more often. So they immediately discontinued the trial in the middle mm -hmm. of it. And they never tried it again. Never again, which is why we don't know in a clear way that estrogen is protective, at least for people that already have cardiovascular disease that are men. It's unclear. There's so many reasons it's protective and it's thought to be protective for women. And the reason why women have less rates of, of uh, cardiovascular disease until they hit menopause. But again, in women's studies, there are two famous women studies on the subject. One is called the Women's Health Initiative, WHI, mm -hmm. and the other one is called the HERS Initiative, which is the Heart and Estrogen Replacement uh, Study, something like that. HERS and WHI. Both of them gave women uh, oral, uh, oral uh, estradiol, synthetic estradiol, combined with a synthetic progestin. Progestin means not progesterone, but something synthetic that also agonizes the progesterone receptor. And what they found is that uh, in both cases, women had worse cardiovascular outcomes. Really? But, now, it has been since then, academia has been hypothesizing on why this happened. And what they've discovered is, well, not discovered, but what they've hypothesized is that, number one, both these women in both of these studies had a longer period since their menopause before they added in the estrogen replacement. Mm, so they had a period without it. A long mm -hmm. period without it. So they tried another study called KEEPS, which is still ongoing, uh, K-E-E-P-S. You can check it out. 
in which they added in the, arrest, uh, the estrogen, I think without progesterone, without progestin, uh, right after their menopause, and they didn't see this deleterious effect. So that may be the reason. Mm -hmm. Another reason may be that these women are getting older and they're getting um, more likelihood of the nitric oxide synthase, which, which increases because of the estrogen, uncoupling from nit nitric oxide production and producing free radicals like superoxide, which I mentioned before. So it could be that also. Um, it, and the other theory is that it could be the progestins that are combined mm -hmm. in there. So it's not completely clear. But with all that said, estrogen is a very powerful hormone that is very useful for the brain. It is, seems very useful for cardiovascular health. It seems to, in, in rodent studies at least, prevent the hypertrophy of the heart that bodybuilders get when they use steroids anyway. And it seems to be generally a very protective hormone. Progesterone is also protective in some ways, but not across all studies, whereas estrogen is protective almost across all, at least, animal studies. So, um, basically, my point of view, I would never use an AI. Uh, personally, I would never, ever use it. I would not be so cosmetically uh, um, driven. Of course, bodybuilders are different. I was an armorer and, uh, you know, a weightlifter, and I never really was com cosmetically, um, you know, whatever. But... I guess maybe they think differently, and if they do, I, I feel like using a diuretic would be a better approach, which is something that causes you to release water from your body, which is estrogen causes you to hold water, so that's the main issue there. I feel like it would be protective, but as I said, I mentioned three studies right now that show that it wasn't protective in these older people. Um, I think that the women's studies had previous cardiovascular events. It's much harder to study these things in people in general because of the long time course of the diseases. Mm -hmm. So it's very, but in general, I can only see a protective element to that. And also I didn't mention, but I have a video on how uh, anabolic steroids affect the brain. And in, in vitro, in Petri dishes, it has been shown that testosterone becomes neurotoxic when an aromatase inhibitor is combined with it. So, uh, mm -hmm. so when, you, when you do use an AI, it becomes neurotoxic, but when you don't use one, unless you go to a very high dose, it does not kill neurons. But it does kill neurons if you do use an AI. And and as we know, testosterone and other anabolic steroids also reduce serotonin's activity in the brain, mm -hmm. and estrogen increases serotonin's activity in the brain. So it seems to be something that combats the exact effects, the heart hypertrophy, the neurotoxic effects, the anti-serotonergic effects, it directly combats those effects. So I would never use an AI. If anything, I would use a diuretic. The only reason I don't say to use um, Nolvadex uh, in particular is there is one uh, deleterious effect of Nolvadex. One thing is that it's been, in some people, it causes uh, degeneration of the eyes. Really? All of the serms do that, yeah. Oh. So that is a serious concern if you're using it in the very long term. Of course, again, it, it helps your lipids a lot. It reduces, I mean, it, it's almost like a... It do, not on the outcomes, yeah, but at least... the trade-off? <laughs> well, it's very rare, the eye, eye condition. Okay. Very rare. It doesn't happen that often. You can check that out by looking at studies of uh, females with breast cancer who use Nolvidex for a very long time. But it also causes... I think Nolvidex causes the uh, reduction in... I'm not sure, but I think it causes a reduction in serotonin. There's some other effect mm. that I don't like that much. But I would always choose a serum over an AI. I would never... But as I said before... It's it, we don't know for sure that AI is damaging, but but as we know, estrogen reduces also the the plaque development because it re reduces the oxidation yeah. of LDL. So it's so many things going on here. Personally, I would never use an AI, and I don't think anybody should. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time.